Future oh Hall of Famer God. Darren Woodson here with you on 105 through the fan. And a good afternoon to you, sir. How the heck are you? I'm doing great. Back on Media Row and, you know, enjoying every bit of it. Yes, sir. Right. Now, are you a Vegas guy? You like Vegas? Uh, not really. Not really. You know, Vegas to me was always trouble. So I went to Arizona State. So I got to make sure I set this right. right? Okay. So I went to Arizona State. We were kind of a, known as a party school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we would get kind buses. Of kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we would get on these buses together. <laughs> I don't know, maybe a hundred and some of us. Wow. And we would make our way up here to Vegas. And my Lord, <laughs> I lost them. years. <laughs> you were never a I character lost. problem. No, I, no, I wasn't. But in college, I was young and dumb. And I, it, was, it got a little out of hand. Yeah. So I, from that point on, when I got into the league, I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing Vegas. Dude, that Arizona State recruiting trip must have been epic. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. So I'm from the Valley anyway, right? I'm, okay. I'm from Phoenix. But... I've seen like when it really, it's really eye popping when from guys from the East Coast come in like yeah. Aliquippa. They come in from Pennsylvania and they mm. come to, to to Phoenix and they get off the plane and they line it. I mean, they had all the cheerleaders out oh, yeah. there hanging out and the Sun Angels <laughs> and they they're just coming back from <laughs> ten degrees on the East Coast and they get off that plane and it's eighty degrees and they're like, oh my god. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Oh, my God. Like, I'm watching their eyes. I'm like, oh, got him. Done. You got him. He's not got lying, him. man. We haven't even left the airport. You're done. Well, I mean, the fact we have a Super Bowl here in Las Vegas is nuts. If your 90s Cowboys were here for a Super Bowl in Vegas, we've heard some of the legendary party stories. Uh, How much of a problem would we maybe have had? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this could, look, Jimmy, no problem. Not a problem. He'd keep it on lock. Oh, he's on lock. He, you better not do something stupid, right? Jimmy would have it on lock. After Jimmy, there would have been a problem. Our, our 95 team that, that played at the Super Bowl in Phoenix, we were practicing and guys were showing up in limos. Yeah. To practice. They didn't get on the bus. Yeah. They are showing up in limos to the practice field, and we were just a little bit, I don't know how we won that game, man. I, I promise you. I promise you. <laughs> and, you know, I couldn't imagine having social Because your players were so much better than yeah, everybody exactly. else. Let me tell you, that's that why you part. won that game. That was a part. But social media would have been a, a factor for us, too. <laughs> yeah, a, a huge factor. I don't know if we would have lined up if we would have. Good thing there was no social media oh, there. God. Yeah. I wouldn't be honest. walking around with these rings. Oh, that's my sure. goodness. I, I got to ask you about Mike Zimmer, who yeah. you know very, very well. And, Zim, I mean, we've kind of been campaigning maybe to try and get this defensive coordinator job. It's at our hands. But right. what, what, what can you tell us about Zim and the time? Well, coach he is. I'm biased, man. I, I spent so much time around Zim. I know how much he cares about the game. He, he's from a background. His father was a coach. Uh, his son, Adam, who, you know, God bless him. Uh, God rest him, man. Yeah. That's tough. One. But uh, who just passed away, was a coach as well, and it just runs in his blood. It's just, you know, it, this entire season, he's pretty much sat on the sideline, and I can't tell you how many times this year he and I talked about football, like every week. Yeah. Like every week he's calling about so-and-so and this and that. And he's just so engaged in the game that, you know, again, I'm biased by it. But, you know, if you want someone that's going to shock the system, he's not going to be your best friend. He's just not. I mean, he and I became friends after a long time because it was a respect factor that ended up being a friendship. But he's tough, uh, hard-nosed. Uh, some players will not want to play. Uh, uh, for him because, you know, he's going to – the expectations are going to be harder than they, they've, uh, they've, they've expected in the last few years. Sure. But he knows the game better than anyone, and uh, he's going to coach hard. And I think that, to me, that's the shock this team needs. Speaking of coaches, how, how special was it to see Jimmy in the ring this year? That was special. It was special. Look, I, I don't know who Jimmy is. I honestly don't because the guy I knew, he just yelled and cussed at me. Like, <laughs> I was – the idiot, right? That's all. Every time I saw him, I was, my name is idiot because that's all. <laughs> I mean, he was so tough on everyone outside of Troy and it, Mike. Everybody else, you know, he's coming at you, and he's, you know, he was really, really hard on the players. But he had so many personalities within that locker room that I think the greatest job that he ever did is not so much on the, on the field, but it was the fact that he knew how to to push us to play at the levels and, and, and get us engaged before the games. And, you know, practices were hard as hell, man. I'm talking full, you know, full padded practice when, when brought us and those guys were up in Green Bay just yeah. walking around in shorts and all that. <laughs> we were in full pads. We had to wear a mouthpiece during practice because we hit so much. But that was the mentality. So when we played the game on Sunday, it was like, man, this is a break. I mean, this is this is this is, this is absolutely fun. We're looking forward game. to this right now. <laughs> yeah, this is what we're looking forward to. But 
phenomenal coach and did a great job of building a staff around him. Uh, and that staff went on to, to be head coaches around the league as it's well. It's interesting because you bring that up with, you know, Jimmy's going to yell and cuss and scream at you. Yeah. Zim is a guy that's going to shake it up. You know, we it seems now you've got a lot of player type of coaches. Yeah. And there's there's different ways to skin a cat, as Stephen yeah. Jones always likes to tell us, right? <laughs> but which coach has got the most out of you? And do you think this team has a little bit of a complacency issue? Maybe why they're not able to get over that hump with you know, accountability? I, I, that's a hard question for me to answer because I'm not in the locker room. If I was in right. the locker room, then I would have a better sense of, because I can remember when, when Jimmy was gone and the sense in that locker room became we're entitled because we won three Super Bowls and now we're 5-11. and 11. I mean, We still think mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we're entitled to, to having some success, and it doesn't work that way, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what the dynamics are. I can tell you this. I, I think when, when you look at this team holistically, I don't know if Dak needs a guy who's going to yell and scream at him. I, I don't know that. I, I don't think he's you know, a guy that probably is, is built that way. I think he's, you know, he's down the road enough, and he's become the leader of this team that maybe you don't need to yell and scream at him, but then you got guys that are on that defensive side of the ball. And look, the defensive guy says, and he'll tell you this, yeah. we are the least respected. You're running down on special teams. You're going to oh, be yeah. in a special teams meeting. Yeah. You got it. We call it the blue jersey. The defensive players wear blue jerseys. The offense guys wear the white jersey. You're going, you're going to run down on special teams. You're going to be treated a certain way. Uh, the coaches on the defensive side are usually a little bit rougher mm -hmm. and tougher. Yeah. And they, they want to, what we call MF you all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of get accustomed to that, like, oh, Okay. Even when Bill Parcells came in, yeah, yeah, he didn't talk to the quarterbacks like you know recklessly. He'd walk over to us and go, he'd be like, "Nice, throw flowers at Quincy, you know Carter." And <laughs> even though Quincy, <laughs> when yeah. he's what throwing kind of flowers, flowers at him, <laughs> he's going to yeah. get him to play. But then he comes over to us and he's like, "You mother," <laughs> you know, he's going in on us. But you know, it just depends. I, I still think this team needs a little bit of both. Yes, it needs a little bit of both, and it's okay to shake them up because I think this team, personnel-wise has the capabilities to be a championship team. I think they're missing some pieces, mm -hmm. it's, it's in, in particular in, in the middle of this defense. Sure. Yeah. That's your but fault. That's not my fault. Yes, I'm, it is. I, it's way, your fault. I'm way It old. is your fault. <laughs> because <laughs> what is it like to be part of an organization that they will never have a player play that position like you? Mm. And they hunt that every damn year. They hunt a guy like look, you, and there's not a guy like you. I, I thought that, you know, look, I, at the back end of the, of, of the season, I think the safety play dropped. But early on with Donovan and, and, and Curse and those guys, I thought see they it, played Woody. well. I thought they played well they early on in that season. They don't see it. You know that. Yeah, but, you know, look, I, hey, that's up to you to say that. For me, I, I think that I think the, the middle of this defense needs to get better. Hands yeah. down. Hands yeah. down. And uh, B, you and I have had these conversations in the past. Like, when your guys up front can play at a high level and sure. you've got a nasty linebacker, he, it, the linebacker yeah. does not have to be the nicest guy. Yeah. Yeah. He could be kind of a jerk. And you let him be a jerk, that's the kind of guy that I'm looking for. Somebody that's slobbering mm -hmm. on the weekends and, you know, kind of Charles Haley-like. Yeah, you know, yeah. Up a little crazy. Yeah, a little crazy. I, I, I need want that. that guy. I want that guy. Man, could you take me into some of these these crazy Jimmy Johnson tough practices? Like, we just talked to Brian Billick the other day. I'm blown away. He's coaching the Baltimore Ravens, one of the greatest defenses ever. They win a Super Bowl. They're not doing any Oklahoma drills in practice mm. at that time. Mm. Now, I'm sure you guys are, oh, right? Yeah. I, mean, we're, we're, I mean, we got Darren Woodson versus Emmett Smith in Oklahoma drills. Yeah. Are you well, freaking kidding well, me? Well, first of all, Emmett never was a – and if Emmett ever tells you – that he he did a hitting drill when he was okay. playing with the Cowboys. <laughs> that is a lie. <laughs> that would be a lie. Matter of fact, when I came in the league, first person that I tangled up with was Michael Irvin. And Jimmy Johnson grabbed me to the side and said, hey, you know Michael Irvin? It's okay. Like, he's going to fight you back. Yeah. You go ahead and rough him up. Yeah. He says, you see number 22? And he said, I said, yeah. And he says, you let him run through the drill. All I want you to do is grab him, butt him up, don't hit him. Right? right. He says, you see number eight? And I said, yeah. And he says, you hit number eight, I'll cut your ass. <laughs> I knew the pecking order early on, right? Yeah. So I never had the chance to hit Emmett or really get entangled up with, you know, with Mike and all them. You had to watch your mouth around Troy as well. But, you know, that was, the, that was kind of, you know, how things shook out back then. But Jimmy was, Jimmy was tough on, yeah. like, there was an expectation with Jimmy. There really was. Like, if you didn't do your job Monday, if I, if I didn't do my job on Sunday, I didn't sleep because Monday I knew when the film came on. Man. Woo, boy. A number of years ago, we were talking with Jerry Jones, and, and in, I don't know why it came up, but the question was, who's the guy from the Cowboys and your ownership that you think would be the toughest guy, could whoop anybody? Mm. And he said Michael Irvin. Mm. What was your experience 
tussling with Michael Irvin over the years. I think Michael Irvin had one of the toughest mindsets and was one of the guys that, you know, mentally was, there wasn't a time where I looked at Mike and I said, oh, he's defeated. Like he was, ne even after a bad loss, he would step up and get on that podium and stand yeah. it, like just take all the darts. Uh, he just, we just, he just did it. I mean, that was just him. So mentally, yeah, he's a guy that's going to be, he's going to be there. He's going to be one of the guys at the end there. But I played against, I played with guys like Tony Tober, man. Tony Tober, mm -hmm. dude. Like people don't have no idea the mental toughness of Tony Tolbert. He'd show up every day I, for nine straight years. He didn't miss a practice with bad knees. Yeah. And he taught me how to be a professional, to show up, when to show up, how to show up, do the little things. Daryl Johnson being another one. You walk around and look at Daryl Johnson. His fingers are all mangled up. Would not miss practice. And that's, that was the mentality back then because if your leaders and your top dogs aren't missing practice, you ain't missing practice. How much Toradol do you think you consumed in, oh my uh, throughout God. the course of your career? <laughs> Just to make it through oh practice. Oh, my God. I tell you what, Toradol, I don't know. I feel like a dope fiend half the time <laughs> I used to walk. It wasn't so much practice. It was game time for me. Right. I came okay. in the league. I got quick ones. You know, I'm, I'll be too long. But when I first came in the league, I was – there was a line before the games. There was this long line yeah. that wrapped around by the train. <laughs> Every team has this, right? Every team. And it wraps around in this little small office where the the uh, the doctor is, yeah. right? And the doctor's the one giving the shot. And I was like, "Who? What's this line for?" And James yeah. Washington said, "You first game of the season." He says, "You'll figure it out. Yeah. You're too young right now. You don't need this right now." And I'm like, "Well, what is it?" He explains it. Tore it all shot. You're too young. First season plays. I played the entire season. No tore it all shot. I went three, four years. By my fourth year. I was in front of the line. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. That, and it took all the little edge and yeah. all the – because it was hard to practice. Like, you practice during the week, and then you have game on Sunday, and you're usually not back. Your body's not usually back until Thursday, Friday, and you're finally getting there, but you still have your fingers, ankles, or whatnot, little knickknacks, and it would take that sharp little pain away yeah. for you to play. Now, Monday was a different story. I was going to say, when does, it, when does that go away no, and then it all Monday, comes crashing? Shoot, you play a 3 o'clock game by about 2 o'clock in the morning, you're like, oh, my God, what <laughs> happened to me? I just got into a car wreck. Someone just you know, dropped Man. me off a plane, but it was... It, was, it slammed you at the end of the day. Well, I'm acting like I'm some kind of... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, dude, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Vegas and I'm talking drugs. Well, we, okay, what about the smelling salts? Are you smelling salts? Oh, yeah. uh, we want to try to drink a little out. bit. Not, not much. Okay, so not it wasn't much. like an amazing... No, like, gotta hit no. This I, you know, I hit it once in a while. And it just wasn't... It didn't get me... Didn't get you going nah, like didn't, that? No, it didn't really. I, I saw guys on kickoff and guys would ha have them in their pads and <laughs> using them. Yeah, during games, Man. I just... Nah. No, I didn't. I didn't need him. We had Sean Alexander on earlier, and we were talking Seattle and, and how you know Brian wanted to draft him. He were the Cowboys, but you got Joey Galloway in that trade. It always makes you think of Emmett's day that he broke the record. But one of the things that stands out about that game, I think you have one of the biggest hits I've oh, ever seen in my life on yeah. Daryl Jackson. Yeah. Is that your number one all-time big hit? No, it, it wasn't. What? It wasn't. It, it, actually, it, it was not. And I shouldn't have been. The only reason I was playing the middle of the field that game and had that hit was because I couldn't cover the slot because I had a high ankle sprain. I, oh. It was hurt. And, and Parcel said, hey, I'm going to let you play safety. Yeah. And I tell you what, he said, I'm gonna, the way he got me to play yeah. is because they were trying to get my ankle, the high ankle sprain right there, giving me shots. And he sure. goes, Parcells walks in and goes, hey, you're not going to cover the slot. Yeah. I'm going to put you in the middle of the field. Dude, you don't, I can't tell you how happy I was. I was like... <laughs> I get to play in the middle field and hit people <laughs> yeah. and not have to cover someone. Yes. I'm in, right? I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm boot, I booted it up and got I got out there and played. But uh, that hit was, it was on Daryl Jackson. He ran a skinny post, and I see Matt. Every time I see Matt Hasselback, I was like, "It's your fault, brother." Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. he stared him down. Yeah, and he kept looking at him, looking at him. And I thought, well, it's either I'm going to go for the interception, and I was trying to get there for the interception, but I got there a little too late. And it was like a bang bang play, and it. But it felt like it sucks. It was a seventy five thousand dollar fine. I'm still hurt by it. Ooh, uh, but it was a football like, play. You ever hit a golf ball? <laughs> yes. And it's just like <laughs> off the tee. You sure. catch it in the oh screws. God. <laughs> you turn the back foot. You only feel like you hit it. Yeah. yeah. That's how that worth was. every penny. Amazing. Oh my God. It felt good. <laughs> but that, that FedEx package sucked. Yeah. How many, how many yeah. FedEx packages did you get? Do you too dang many. Yeah. I got a lot. I got a lot. And I probably would have had a lot more if I would have continued to play. But um, I, I, you know, hitting quarterbacks, you know, it was really that my last couple of years is when the rules started to. Yeah. To change, and I started to see other guys, you know, like Dawkins and mm -hmm. 
Uh, who else? Uh, Lynch. 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 Yeah. You, know, you guys started getting yeah. you know, ding. But I, at one point for like two weeks, like I had the highest fine, which I was not proud of. And then I think Dawkins came right behind me. Took over. Took over on that one. <laughs> oh, no, Rodney Harrison hit. Oh, hit, Rodney. He hit Jerry Rice in yeah. the end zone. And yeah. I think that was the next big fine. So. All right, Darren. Not a, not a Vegas guy anymore, but it looks like you're a Choctaw guy. I am a Choctaw guy, man. We were right this 90. Oh, my boy Billy Davis here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Choctaw is just 90 minute drive from DFW. All the amenities in the world that you can imagine at for a casino. Uh, I take my kids there. We go to concerts. My wife and I go to concerts there. Uh, great steakhouses. And let me tell you, if you if you have family, friends, take the take that 90 minute drive up there and get in that that Class A pool, man. It's like a resort style pool. Uh, the partnership is myself, uh, Troy Aikman, uh, Emmett is coming on board today. I think they Let's just go. Yeah, yeah. and then. Uh, and Pudge. Pudge Rodriguez. So it's it's been a really good run for us, and uh, we can't wait to continue to build that relationship. It's amazing. It's awesome. No. Great segment for us, man. Thanks for Thank knocking you, it out. Uh, it's hard. Best. Our best of luck to you this week. Thank and, you. Uh, and have a great weekend. Thanks, man.